Looking at the terrain here is like something from the movie Avatar. The vast mountain ranges, the ethereal cloud cover, it's like I've stepped into another world, another time. This is certainly unfamiliar territory. I really don't know what to expect. A civilization 5,000 years old, China has produced a culture that is considered one of the oldest still extant in the world. This is especially evident in Chinese ancient towns, where the past is not only present, there is also a wealth of intangible cultural heritage waiting to be discovered. I'm George Young. As an actor and writer, I've spent my career under the guise of others, but I've been living at the crossroads of different identities and cultures my entire life. Half Greek Cypriot and half Malay Chinese, this unconventional blend sometimes spurs questions as to who I am. And that's what I'm here to find out. I'm traveling across the breadth of China, returning to my roots, to places, some for the very first time. Where are we right now? OK, so we're going down there. To experience a life that in many ways is yeah. just as it once was. Wow. So it's a feng shui. Uh, uh, feng. In order to reconnect with my Chinese heritage. Oh. Um. Dragon boat racing is one of China's most colorful traditions that first emerged over 2,000 years ago. It is most commonly associated with Chinese poet and patriot Chu Yuan, who drowned himself in protest against the political corruption of his day. The locals rowed out on their boats to find his body, splashing with their oars and beating drums to scare fish away. Dragon boat racing has traditionally been dominated by men. Women aren't even allowed to touch the men's boats, let alone train or race in them. And that's very much a reflection of traditional Chinese patriarchal society. But in recent years, this little village of Yenchao, just outside Xichao, has produced some of the finest rowers in the nation, breaking down those traditional patriarchal barriers to the sport. Located among a network of rivers in the Pearl River Delta, the waterways have long served as roads and boats as the main mode of transportation. As such, villagers like Panhui Zhu have developed a natural instinct for the water. So what got you into the sport in the first place? Do you still remember that first competition? Mothers, farmers, fisherwomen, and students. This motley crew belongs to the women's dragon boat team. They keep to a rigorous training plan, just like professional athletes. Something I'm about to experience. Put it in the water. Oh, oh, use my back. Okay, 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 okay. okay. And then, and then you do, I, I notice that. You keep it up. Okay. 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 Stick it in. Okay. And then smile, right? That's not important to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. 我们每一分钟 
跨一百二十五章的奖品那么高的？一分钟一百二十五章，可以可以一分钟十个吗？一百二十不可能，慢慢来就可以了。我们上去。Okay. You think I'm ready？ 哎，对对对,对，我准备好。OK。Yep. I'm trying to stay in rhythm, but I have no rhythm, which is a problem when you're trying to keep in rhythm. It's this sort of discipline, determination, and strength that has earned the team accolades both at home and abroad. To date, the team has represented China on 16 occasions and accumulated 238 gold medals. Oh, wow. Panjie was absolutely right. You really have to stick to the rhythm of the drum. You've got to keep to that rhythm if you want to get anywhere. The other thing I learned was that these people, these people individually, I mean, they're family people. They have their own jobs, their own lives. But together, they're part of this gold medal winning, world class engine. And for one minute and 125 strokes, I was part of that. Not bad for the first time. How does it feel to represent your country at the highest level? 參加呢個大集體裏邊嘅大家庭裏邊，講話誒遇到困難啊，個拼搏同埋個團結，令我嘅人生中長見識咗好多。So what do you think the future holds for this sport? I mean, do you see the younger generation seeing your success and wanting to follow in your footsteps? 好多青少年啊，同埋好多年輕嘅一一代咧，更加希望以後奧運會有呢個龍舟嘅項目。使呢個龍舟啊，誒呢個運動推廣得越嚟越好。Dragon boat racing has evolved into a global sport that is currently practiced in more than 60 countries around the world. China alone boasts 50 million dragon boaters. Thanks to a newfound openness and broader appeal, not only has this tradition survived, it is thriving. I'm traveling across the mainland in order to explore the rich heritage of this ancient civilization. So far, it's been a cultural reawakening. I'm heading to a town called Jiangwan in Ouyuan County, one of the six counties of the ancient Huizhou Prefecture that's now within Jiangxi Province. Now, even though you can no longer see Huizhou on any contemporary map, its cultural heritage lives on. The culture is known for kinship, commerce, and Confucianism, reflected in the Hui-style architecture, which developed into a significant school during the Song Dynasty. I'm meeting 71-year-old Wang Jianshu at Jiang's family house Wow. to find out more. This is called Tang. 四面五面的水都往天井里面流，水是财的表示，就是财了要留到自己的家里面。So it's a feng shui thing. 哎，风水。No ceiling lets in the water, which is a good fortune and wealth, and it's captured. 这个缸也是这个意思。In this well. 哎，这里就是厨房。啊。The real wealth can be seen in the underlying details of the house that embed the makings of a robust community. 绘画建筑呢，很多都通过雕刻来表达主人的那种追求，哎，就是道德上的要求啦。核心的还是反映儒家文化。These implicit messages, these subliminal messages in the decor, the layout, and the finer details like the wood carvings, all trying to teach you or the family that lives here these basic tenets of life, of how to behave, how to do well and succeed in life.
The architecture of the region is inextricably tied to carving and sculpture work. Much of the restoration work in Jiangwan is being carried out by local master and purveyor of Huizhou's carving heritage, Yu Yogui. So where does the inspiration come from to make a piece like this? This is a piece of art. It shows the beauty of the beauty of the beauty. Look, the teacher came here, is very polite. He told you how to go. This is the beauty. 意识礼貌，这就是体现我们自己乡愁的一种。每家每户的老房子，嗯，哎，都有二十四孝，以孝为先。一个人没有孝，就不可能有成功你的成功之道。哎，所以把这种喜悦、安康这种的画面，这种这种设计的方案。You can tell your love for the town、It、shows this idyllic picture of nostalgia. 对。I really want to give it a go. Is there anything you'd recommend I could start with today? I'll take you. I'll prepare you. Let's go. 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 Okay. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. So, Xian. You put this knife. Okay. This is round. This is perfect. So, right hand, left hand. I grab it at this, and I just follow the line. Okay. Here we go. Right, right, right. 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 Confidence. Oh, oh too much. Too 对, confident. 对, too confident. 对, I need to be 对, less confident. 对, okay. 对, okay. Just the right amount. 再就是，哎哎，这要糊了，不能太斜，太斜会爆掉的。这样子。对。用劲。Yeah. 用劲敲。对。OK. 敲。敲。OK. 对对对对。Yes. Okay, and then I turn it round. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, that's the true artwork. 对对，所以你先要学会简单的，慢慢来，慢慢来，对对对。So slowly, slowly, I'll get. 慢慢来 ，eventually. 对。Master Yu and I head to the village to deliver his wood carving to its new owner. Oh, you're done. 哎，陈总好，陈总好。Hi, this is Chen Zhong. Chen Zhong, nice to meet you. Marking a new chapter in a family history and carrying on a tradition that transcends brick and mortar and into the very heart of its people. As I look around, the influence of ancient Huizhou culture is everywhere from ancestral halls, schools, family homes. It's helped shape and develop a region for centuries at every level. It's a culture that continues to serve as the blueprint for Jiangwan's future development. Some 600 years ago, the farmers of ancient Huizhou were faced with a myriad of mountains and limited arable land. 
they left their homes to pursue trade, only to become one of the most powerful merchant groups in Chinese history, with a cultural stronghold. <laughs> These merchants were steeped in Confucianism, and repaying one's hometown was considered a righteous activity by their standards. I've come to seek businessman Wang Xinquan to understand their relevance in today's China. Mr. Wang. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Hello. Oh, oh. Nice to meet you. So this is home, isn't it? Four villages on top of a mountain, around 1,500 people. I, I, I can't imagine what that's like. I Finding love in any part of the world's hard enough, but it sounds like it's really tough here. So with all the obstacles your community has faced, what could be done to help the situation? Since 2006, Huang has been creating much-needed infrastructure, not just for his village, but for all four villages in this isolated terrain. It's an ambitious build, to say the least. So these are the four villages here. Where are we right now? You've been building this road for well over 10 years. What are the biggest challenges you've faced? So what stage have you reached on this project? With a total of 32.2 kilometers and over 400 bends, the road aims to connect the villagers to the world outside and open up new opportunities to economic development, greater access to healthcare and education. So what does your family think of this? You building a road into a mountain? Mr. Huang is a living legacy. By adopting the lessons from the past, this road goes a long way to alleviating existing problems and is simultaneously paving the way for the future. regarded as the ancestor of Chinese opera. Quinshu dates back 600 years, and it is one of the oldest forms of opera being performed today. This piece is one of the most iconic, the Peony Pavilion. And what better place to enjoy this than at the birthplace of the art form?
my search into my Chinese heritage brings me to a water town south of the Yangtze River, named Changdeng. It is known for being the home of patriotic scholar Gu Yan Wu, whose motto, every man alive has a duty to his country, has been immortalized by school books and the mindsets of the locals. Qiandang is also the point of origin for one of China's most sophisticated and influential art forms, Quinchu Opera. That was a fantastic performance, by the way. Can you tell me more about the scene you just performed? But of the 4,000 works created during the Ming Dynasty, the Peony Pavilion is one of 400 works that remains in circulation today. Quinchu has survived through the efforts of dedicated connoisseurs and supporters, who've taken it upon themselves to protect their national treasure. Yes. Okay. And so I'm asking her out for the first time. It's just a very polite way of saying it, right? Okay, so that's the particular dialect of this region, I see. Okay. Ah. Ah, Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, the students here make it look easy, but Quinchu requires years to master. If I'm going to talk the talk, I must walk the walk. Slowly, slowly walking, and your eyes have to look straight. And one, one. relax your body. I can't, I can't relax when I'm... And then two. two. Yes, two. Three. Three. Yes, and you are smiling. Yes. Four. Four. I'm ready to make my Quinchu debut at Qiangdeng's ancient play stage, the setting for cultural preservation of the art. Liu Mengmei is a young man, a young man, a young man, Okay. Oh, I see. So you're actually pulling my face back. I'm getting a facelift before the performance. Wow. Now my eyebrows are very, very fierce. <laughs> Q 
Kunshu is a comprehensive art that combines literature, history, music, dance, and aesthetics. Traditionally a hobby exclusive to China's highbrow society, now this piece of oral and intangible cultural heritage is accessible to everyone thanks to its guardians. I have to admit, coming from the West, I had my preconceptions of China. The vastness of the place, the way of life, it all seemed unfamiliar, alien to me. But then I met people like Mrs. Chen the noodle maker, Pan and the dragon boat team, Mr. Zhou and his cormorants. I discovered the familiar in the unfamiliar. That heart and humanity that's within every country, in every part of the world, wherever you come from.